and just uh, check in with yourself. This is only a conference, but in the next half hour while, while I'm here, what are your hopes and fantasies for this half hour? Just check in with yourself. What do you want from this half hour? The role of community and integration, being here. Okay, open your eyes. And tell one of the people next to you what came up for you. Just a couple sentences. Go for it. Just say something. Well, Don't say much. Um, I'm just gonna pause this. So um, that's just that's just to get us started, just to be with yourself, what you want, um, kind of a check-in with things like things that are roughly like intentions. Uh, my assumption for right now is that everyone's here. Everyone, people are interested in integration uh, because of their own growth, uh, spiritual growth, emotional growth, whatever. Otherwise, you're if you're focused exclusively on just having fun, um, it might, that might seem, seem irrelevant, but I'm just a reminder that you fun, like we're mammals. Play is a mammalian version of learning. It's a, just our natural way to learn. So here's the first thing. This is just about integration in general. Uh, why we need integration, we need to do integration work and to help build, build the muscles of learning after an experience. What, um, how do we build this into something that helps us grow? Susanna touched on this, but uh, a lot of what happens is you have an experience, it's really moving, you're different for a while, you're different, you feel different, you seem different, other people think you're different, but after a while the experience kind of fades and life goes back to normal and Everything just is back in the same or similar fog to where your life has been before. And that's pretty common. And it's, it's the way, it's what naturally happens with us when we don't, when we have a big experience. It may change some things, but a little bit of change sticks and a lot of it fades away. So, the question is, what can we do about that? That's what I'm, I'm looking at two different computers at once. It's getting me very confused. Um, so, yeah, change takes time. Um, what's this say? It says psychedelics can trigger understanding. On the other hand, behavior change takes time. In this culture, it's often harder to sustain than we acknowledge. Neil Goldsmith is. Um, I don't know if he's actually a psychedelic psychotherapist. He doesn't claim to be, but he writes a lot about it, on the, and he's on the East Coast. So he's written a book called Psychedelic Healing, and he talks a lot about, there's a section in the book um, on integration. Um, it's actually one of the richer sections on integration I've seen in a book, even though there's not that much. Not that much has been written on integration. So what do we do? Well, like I said, focus on getting things into your life. Just, that's just what it is. Integration, I mean, what's it mean? It just means getting everything into your life. Because it's your whole life. There's nothing, all of your life is relevant to the, to the process. You carry everything from your life into the, into the journey. You carry, and then after the journey, you carry that with you through your whole life. So a lot of people think of integration as something that happens at the end. But actually, it's kind of something we're always, it's, it's part of everything. So preparation makes sense as well, before the journey, to help you integrate things later on, long before the journey. The work you're doing on yourself years earlier will play into your journey. John was talking earlier about um, uh, psychedelic psychotherapy. And what happens if, um, uh, on some sort of journey with a therapist, maybe with mushrooms or something, and uh, actually, I think you you were someone was asking a question about, um, well, can you do therapy? Maybe therapy happens as you're coming down, and actually, all the work you might have done with that therapist before you go into the journey, in the journey, it's there. Not just there because of the work you've already done, but things you didn't really understand before come clear. So. 
all the work you've done, you've done before plays into that experience and, ma and magnifies it and is part of the thing, it's integrating everything into your life. So the processes and everything that happened up to the journey is integrated into the journey and then the journey is integrated into your re rest of your life. So it's not just this thing called integration, which is this little corner or something you do afterward. Um, a lot of people, it's often conceived that way, but that's not, that's not really what it is. Um, there are a lot of, and there are a lot of ways to make it more effective. Um, I mentioned, I just mentioned something about therapy, but I was going to read this later, but I'm going to read this now. Um, I was saying it's like people, integration is often conceived of as something that's just after a journey. I'm going to read something from an email I received not so long ago um, related to someone who was doing a ceremony. Following our series of circles, we will also be hosting an integration circle on Sunday evening beginning at 7 p.m. While attendance at the integration circle is optional, it is highly recommended. We have found these integration circles to be incredibly useful for grounding the experience of the ceremony into our being and for receiving valuable reflection and feedback in a positive community setting. We strongly encourage your attendance at this gathering, which will be preceded by a community social time and a light potluck feast. So the person that came from, they did lots of other things that I, I consider integration. So it was done reasonably well, but that phrasing just relates to the concept of integration as really being something you do afterward. Maybe just for a little while. It's like a gathering of a couple hours. Here's your integration. But um, it's just like a little, a little framing to help remind you, integration work, you've got to do integration work. You've got to do integration work. Um, another way to look at this is um, you're going on a journey. Don't you want your friends with you? Uh, or at least to have them wish you bon voyage, have a great time. I hope, you have a good, I, I hope you're okay. Have a safe trip. And then when you come home, don't you want them to welcome you? Give you a hug? So, and that's just the beginning of seven, and like the part of the rules, I'm, I'm shifting into a little bit the rules. The community plays an in integration. Um, and I mean, as I go, hopefully you'll, you'll see a little bit more about how your relationships with your communities, all different kinds of communities, um, can support your integration better. Uh, Susanna was talking about different aspects of integration. I'm focusing specifically on community. There's, I'll talk a little bit about other stuff, but that's the primary stuff I'll talk about. So just like the general stuff about um, uh, this, about this, oops. Yep, that's right. So yeah, um, memories fade. I said that it's easy for what seems like life changing to not result in a lot of change. Your integration process spans your whole life, before the journey and after. And actually, integrating your journey, you don't really choose whether to integrate it. It just happens. The question is how how much it's able to be beneficial for your life. It's not whether it's part of your life because it is. But what are you able to do with it? What can you make of it? So that's that. You can choose to support integration processes that help you grow more. Um, but there's more. You're not the only one having the experience. Because um, you're taking your whole, all your communities with you, all the people you know, everything you know, it's all going with you. And so, I mean, I'm in the middle of a theory class on transpersonal theory right now, so this is sort of how we're holding things, but really, you're, you're participating in a shared event. You might be the main player in it, but um, everyone's involved. Actually, not just everyone, everything is involved. It's a piece of the universe, and everything plays into everything else in all sorts of sometimes um, very surprising and odd ways. Um, 
but to just to make it make this more real because that sounds a little bit eh, theory philosophy um, too spiritual I'm gonna give you a real life example just what everyone's familiar with what happens when someone dies and I don't mean they become one with consciousness I mean what happens to you when one of your parents dies or what happens when your friend's parents, the friend, your, the, one of the parents of your friend dies? And how does that affect you? You know that they've changed, but your relationship with your friend may change because of their, their change. So, if you go on a journey, you're not the only one who changes. All the different people around you may be touched in all sorts of different ways. It did, maybe not in the same moment as you, but you're touching everyone around you. So, I mentioned that in relation to death, but actually, that relates to all rites of passage. Big, big rites of passage. Depends on the culture, but obviously death and birth, that's, that's universal, but um, Marriage mostly, although here not, every, not everyone has the same relationship with marriage. Um, it involves the, the whole community, but other kinds of transitions. Um, different kinds of um, traditional initiations, transitions from uh, childhood into adulthood, uh, from, mm, I don't know, there are different ages. It might be youth into it, like a, at age, maybe age 20. Um, I talked about, I say birth here, but that's birth from the one who's being born, the mother, the father, the community, other people around them, same as with death. So this is just stepping into this broad perspective of, okay, everything we experience touches everyone. And these rites of passage are the traditional contexts in indigenous cultures where people would use entheogens. Not with, maybe not with um, specifically with death and birth, but they're re-engaging the death and birth, birth experience. And with the other things with um, different kinds of initiations and with marriage and all sorts of all sorts of other processes for life transition, yeah, there's a lot of cultures that use entheogens as part of that. So this touches on um, uh, another theme of um, well, really who we are, and we're social beings. That's that's kind of what humans are super, super, super social beings. So our social reality is, um, this is our social reality. It's all community, different scales of community, different kinds of community, different kinds of relationships. But that's how humans are made. Uh, we become who we are through our relationships. And um, it's actually not just our relationships with other people. It's with, um, with everything around us. So there's, um, again, with indigenous cultures, they're often viewing um, uh, self through the lens of relationships with the plants around them or the other animals and seeing those as part of their communities. Or maybe someone has a specific relationship with a specific animal. Or what about the ancestors? Our relationship with those who are dead or who haven't been born yet. So those are part of your, could be considered part of your community, one of your communities as well. Uh, more commonly though, we're going to be thinking, we're thinking about the communities that we can, we, we, we directly engage with. And some people direct and more, are work in more of these indigenous ways, have more of um, indigenous mind or stronger sense of ecological self. Some people want to build that more. But there are a lot of different kinds of community that are really relevant to be working with um, in preparation for and afterward in relation to antigenic experiences. And I didn't actually put, um, I did put a, put a bunch of things here. I mentioned spiritual communities. That's actually a really big deal, just in terms of some place to mirror back your learnings. And I say spiritual communities, but that I, you could see that also as um, emotion communities for they're oriented around emotional learning or spiritual learning or anything related. Um, could be the people in some sort of entheogenic group that have a ceremony together. 
uh, your friends, your peers, your family. I mentioned um, uh, other creatures, other other living things before. Um, other beings. I said I said the dead or the future beings, but it could also be different um, other kinds of entities. However you frame that, whatever kinds of beings you want to be engaging with in your life, before the journey, after the journey, build it. Build your relationships and they'll carry, carry in with you. On a direct um, people level though, uh, in terms of the journey, some of the most clearest, the clearest work you can do has to do with, has to do with the roles that the community plays for you. So, yeah, I've got some of the, just a bunch of things up here in terms of the different roles your social community can play for you in relation to a journey. Um, uh, I'll just read them quickly. I don't really like, I'm not used to doing PowerPoints. This is like my third time ever using PowerPoint. But um, I usually just speak and have some notes, so I don't really, this is feeling very awkward. But um, yeah, people hear how you, how you see yourself. You hear how other people perceive you. And that's, we all know how valuable that is in our lives, but how does that relate to following in preparation for? How you go into a journey? And then how you come out of it? Same for validation. Validation of your experience. Um, just, or just playing, be, how does it feel to be in dialogue with someone? Um, what's it like to see your impact on someone else? And so on. So, community can also keep you from changing. You have your existing social relationships. Everyone's used to you being a certain way. You go through a journey. You feel like you've changed. Everyone thinks it's bullshit. <laughs> they treat you just the same. You start not believing your own experience. You go back to your old ways. There's some little nagging thing inside you that sort of has doubt, but maybe you already have even had that, that beforehand from some other experience of some kind in your life, and then you just go back. That's really easy to have happen. At the same time, it's also really easy to ignore everyone else around you and think, I've got this new perspective on life, I have to, I'm completely different, I have to be different. I am now enlightened. <laughs> or whatever, whatever's going on for you. I, I don't know what may be going on. Um, People get really confused sometimes. Sometimes after a journey, someone, uh, John was talking about schizophrenics, so that came up briefly. Someone who doesn't have a strong ego structure can go through a journey, lose track of what their inner mm, symbolic world is and the outer world, and be really confused and really think that they're Jesus and believe it because they got their worlds confused. So, um, and there are ways people can be Mostly, people who go through experiences like that come back after a while. That's, but that happens a lot better when they have community around them and they know going into it that they need to listen to their community and get feedback, but they also have a sense of who to trust and who not to and how. So if you go into something knowing that you might come out with your sense of reality a little distorted, both for the good and for the not so good, and you're looking for feedback from people, but you know to take it like both as, okay, I, I need support and I also need to be myself. So that whole process of how do you find people that you trust more beforehand and then who do you go to afterward is really important. And that, actually that process of, mm, I said it depends largely on you, that's your process of engaging with, finding how you trust, who you trust, etc. So, in relation to doing a journey, Susanna mentioned this also, but there's sort of, I just look at it in terms of integration work before you go on a journey, during a journey, and after a journey. So, when you're, in terms of leaving, before a journey, I think of it as in terms of assessing your goals, helping you see what you want. I just had you all say something to each other about what you want, what you want for the next, I guess now it's 10 minutes plus five for questions or something like I that? No, you only have five minutes total. Including questions? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go Se off that. Se seven, that. seven minutes. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. That's, that's, uh, I'm just going to go really fast then. 
Um, I told you they could just send you off, say bon voyage. Um, they can give you feedback on your perceptions. Um, they can help you see issues emerging from your life. Um, I was in a re I'm in, been in grad school, do classes on um, sexuality, and do those classes, and it's like there's a lot of movement in the sense like we're dancing with music. No, there's no sex in the class, but um, uh, and but you feel what's going on for you in relation to other people, and then you go into after I, I did a journey shortly after one of these classes, and the stuff that came up for me in engaging with people there came up for me in the journey. You better believe it. Okay, during the journey, like I said, you carry what you've already what you already have. I think I said something about that. Like all of your life goes in with you. During a journey, and I'm talking about, there's also potential for your friends, your community to be with you. So if they're physically with you, they can take care of you. They might provide um, content for your journey. Like I went to saw a group ceremony once, and I was an hour and a half late. I completely screwed up the time. And that fact of being late and the vulnerability I felt about being late and arriving, maybe I didn't know, maybe they would already be journeying when I arrived, um, and I wouldn't be participating. That played into my experience profoundly. It was a really, it was actually one of the, it was one of the most important pieces of it. If you're physically with someone, you can also you may end up having stuff come up about the people you both know, people you know, you share, shared community. Um, Yep, no, I'm trying to move fast. <laughs> uh, mirroring, um, seeing your impact on other people during a journey. Maybe something not so much of an entheogenic journey could be other things, but just seeing how you touch other people. Maybe you're journeying and other people not, aren't. You're a burning man that could be a mix of everything. <laughs> Reality testing. I had a friend in college on mushrooms. She thought her eye was melting out of its socket. She got wasabi in her eye. And she's like, she turned to a friend and said, is my eye melting out of its socket? Like, no. A lot of tears coming out, but it's fine. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, also in person, could be, it could be group processes, structured group processes. Um, anyone here know what a tea group is? Some people. Basically, it's a kind of group therapy session. I was once in a group therapy session with MDMA. Fascinating. Really fascinating. Um, I've also done, done some of the work of um, uh, uh, Joanna Macy's work. Anyone know familiar with her work? Uh, group processes related to um, uh, deep ecology and getting a deeper sense of yourself in relation to other, in relation to the natural world. And we used, uh, I was, did some processes based on her work that someone facilitated it based uh, with, with small doses of mushrooms. And then there's also guidance, whether it's a therapist or just, you're scared, I'm like, I'm burning up, I'm burning up. Well, just sink into it, be the heat. Um, and then afterward, like I said, people often think of um, uh, integration as only afterward. But as I go through the next ones, I'm going to go kind of quickly. But anything that I didn't, each one, this is afterward. For each one, think about what you would do beforehand to make it more effective. So witnessing. Accountability. Someone said something about um, uh, implementation. So someone was talking about implementation in the other room. So the, the changes you want to make in your life, the things you say, I'm going to do this. Well, who keeps you, holds you accountable? How do you hold yourself accountable? How do you do it or not do it? Community helps you with this. Uh, feedback on your perceptions of how you are. Um, reality testing of various kinds. Validate your experience. Um, see how you're reacting and responding to people. Also contact for experimenting with how, you, how or who you are. So, this is something I read in um, someone's um, dissertation, actually, about a shamanic ceremony. 
and the, what happened afterward in terms of the integration. And it's actually a section titled The Integration. The blindfolds are taken off, and we are offered juice or water. This third stage of the journey, integration, may last as long as five hours. It is a time for the group to discuss with Caesar and each other whatever occurred during the journey. He may, have, he may have us read what we wrote during the preparation, look at our drawings, do body work on a fellow participant, etc. Invariably, we have a strong sense of intimacy and community with the others, sharing tears and hugs. Telling and hearing deep experiences of the mystery in our lives creates a special bond. When it's finished, everyone, participants, staff, have a feast, might my, my dance, hot tub, this is a very significant time. We're very open and vulnerable, filled with love, sensitivity, and gravity and gratitude. Um, I'll stop there, but that gives a little bit of the flavor of what happens in a group, in the group afterward. The strong that happens stronger when you, people have done more work before and afterward. And so I have a um, last question for you. Close your eyes again. Where have you gone in the last half hour? Yeah, yeah. So, what's been your um, yes. journey? What's moved through you? Okay, open your eyes. And we're probably done right now. So, just to say to anyone near you, just send me a <laughs> Anything that came up with you. Thank you. Thanks, Hank.